Fill your thirst beside the river Wash the journey from your head Hi, welcome to Healing Outside the Box. I'm Rosemary Lachance, an energy healer and a spiritual teacher. And I am Dina Scungio, a student and teacher of spirituality. And this is our 153rd show. And the title of the show is Reincarnation, Part 1. We now have a live sh call in, in show, and the phone number is 203-907-0436. Our format has changed. While we will still have guests from time to time, we are going to give you food for thought information about spirituality based on the teachings of Hans Wilhelm from his website, www.lifeexplained.com. We will play a different DVD on each show and then have dialogue about it. We welcome and encourage you to call in and ask your questions. Anytime between shows, you may also email me or write letters to me and or to the TV station asking your questions about the show, and we'll read them on the next show and try to answer them. It's our belief that the way to understand each other is to share with each other with open honesty. Each individual is free to accept, reject, or adjust their thinking for the choice is always up to each individual. Just maybe for those who seek it, the truth will be discovered. People today find themselves facing some expected or unexpected questions on various topics or themes. Many are among the most decisive confronting society today. How many people in our own community have fallen into the arena of life explained? Societies all over are exposed to actually facing life situations where the traditional understanding of such things as religion, family life, and even love has been, as they believe, undermined. It's necessary for people to begin to care through sharing of their understandings, their special gifts, and even their giving of self to others. Our format accepts the various views of individuals who are not only willing to share their thoughts, but do, to do so with a respect for those with different views. We believe that everyone will have their principles and beliefs, but hope they will still have an open mind and heart. This openness allows for possible changes, growth, and new discoveries in life. This program hopes through sharing thoughts and experiences, many may also realize that one is not alone in what they feel and believe. They may also discover that they may provide encouragement to others. They also may discover that sharing about, caring about, and thinking about life one sees through the senses of another besides their own. This is not a religious show. And no matter what religion you follow, or if you follow the Bible, the information we give you will only enhance your beliefs. We do not try to convince you of anything. We will listen to a video from Han's site, and then we will have a discussion about it, and you may call in and ask questions you would like. We plan to share a new video each week unless we have not finished our discussion from the last show. Unfortunately, calling in can only be done if you live in North Haven, where the show was recorded. We will still record the shows, and they will be shown in all the other towns. After you watch them in other towns, you may email or write us with your questions, and they will be answered in, on our shows or personally. If we have a guest, you may also call in then, too, in North Haven only, and ask questions of our guests. And we will give you our contact information at the end of the show. To find out what shows are playing in your area and when they are playing, please contact the public service channel in your town to find out their website, giving you their address, your address, and phone number. Please check Rosemary's website where you will find a list of all the towns that air this show under Healing Outside the Box. We will give you her, my website address at the end of the show. We hope that you enjoy the show. In just a minute or so, we're going to show the first DVD, which is very short. It's only about two minutes. And then after that, we'll go right into the second DVD about reincarnation, part one, and we'll have discussion about it. So we'll just wait in the meantime for this video to be uploaded so we can show it. And please like the show on Facebook under Healing Outside the Box, where you can see and learn about and see pictures of our past guests and ask questions or leave comments. And now enjoy the show. Welcome to Life Explained. I am Hans Wilhelm. 
This is my first V-book, a book where every chapter is a short video instead of a printed or digital text. These videos are purposely kept short because I know we are all lacking the only luxury there is in life and that is time. These videos are specially designed for viewers who are interested in spirituality. For more than 45 years I have been a student as well as a teacher of the spiritual laws and it is now my great pleasure to share with you these insights in these videos. I will speak about the law of projection, the law of attraction, the law of grace, the law of karma and so on and so on. These are all spiritual laws, they are universal laws and they are as real as the law of gravity and they affect our life day to day. Whether we believe in them or not, they don't care about our opinion. And neither have I any need to convince you about this material. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, also great. They are not linked to any specific religious or spiritual path. These laws are universal material. I personally found that knowing about these spiritual laws and the aspects of these spiritual laws has made all the difference in my life. It helped me to clear my anxiety and worry about the future. Where in the past I saw chaos, I now see the underlying perfection. It has helped me to uh, appreciate everything far more and have a much deeper gratitude for everything. It helped me to understand who I am, what my purpose is here in life. And it has helped me to create my future as well as clear up things of the past which needed to be cleared up. And most of all, it helped me to understand myself and my fellow man much, much better and created some peace and harmony within me. From time to time I will add new videos to this book and if you are interested please just leave your email address and I will let you know. In the meantime I wish you much enjoyment with these videos and if you know anybody who may be interested in this material please send them a link. Come join me in this wonderful exploration of this exciting material. I am Hans Wilhelm and in this video in the Life Explained series I would like to talk about reincarnation. What is reincarnation? The word carne of course means flesh and incarnation is the process of a soul or spirit entering a physical human body. And reincarnation means the repeated return of that soul or spirit into a human body. Let's take a closer look at it. We are by nature spiritual beings, also called souls. Our true realm of existence is, of course, spirit. So why would some of us want to incarnate, meaning enter the physical body here on Earth? Now, the reasons are manifold. Some come here to observe. Some come here to assist other souls. Some come to explore. Some come to simply enjoy physicality. But the vast majority of us come here because we are bound to the cycle of reincarnation. Which means we still have unfinished business here on Earth. Reincarnation gives us the opportunity to complete and heal anything that has not been resolved or completed in a previous lifetime. As souls we intuitively know what we still have to clear up, any hurt, any pain, any loss that has not been atoned for or forgiven, will call us back into another life. Nobody is forcing us to go, but we know that we cannot spiritually advance until we have healed everything down here. We therefore have the deep desire to make amends or experience the effects that others once suffered from our thoughts, words, actions, which is called karma. Therefore, out of our own free will, we choose to reincarnate once again. By the way, more on what happens before we incarnate is on my video, Life Before Birth. Now, the souls with whom we often have the most of our karma are the members of our future family here on Earth. They also have come here for the same reason, to heal and overcome past karmas with each other and with us. Therefore, they are usually of similar vibration 
than we are. And this is important because we know that our soul can be only attracted to parents of similar vibrations. We may have been in this particular family many times before, but in different constellations and maybe in different sects. It can be that we have been the mother or father of our future parents in a previous lifetime. And together, as a family, we have created causes that now change us together as karma. And now we have the chance and reincarnate again and loosen these chains and undo this karma, which will result in mutual freedom. What happens here in this family applies to all other people who we meet in our life, at work, in clubs, our neighbors. We either are attracted or repelled by some of them, and that usually means that there is some karmic ties that needs to be cleared up. Now, you may wonder, if this is all true, why don't we know much about karma or reincarnation? Well, there is no absolute need to know about reincarnation to, and to have a successful life here on Earth. We are all given some wonderful tools that tell us how to live our lives on Earth. Most souls incarnate into cultures that have one dominant book of wisdom. It can be the Torah, the Bible, the Quran, and so on. And in all of them, they have the same basic rules of life and the golden rule that says, don't do unto others what you don't want them to do unto, unto you. They say it in different words, but the meaning is the same. And in the Western world, we also have the Ten Commandments and the Sermon on the Mount. They are straightforward, very simple, not complicated. In a few words, we are advised not to kill, not to lie, not to cheat, not to steal, have no idols and respect our parents and help and assist all those less fortunate than we are. But most of all, also to love and honor God who is in everyone and everything around us. The problem is that we also know about all these basic rules of life prior our incarnation. But once we are here on this earth plane, we easily forget. We are bombarded by so many distractions and temptations that we can easily forget our ideals and the reason why we incarnated. We get lost in our ego, materialism and selfishness. So once again, we might make new or similar mistake as in the past and then we are even more trapped in the cycle of reincarnation. But if we live consciously by the basic rules of life, like the Golden Rule and the Ten Commandments, we can bring our soul into a higher vibration. That means when we die, our soul will then be attracted to a higher level of existence than we were before we incarnated. Eventually, we will no longer need this life and death cycle here on Earth and continue our education and our growth of consciousness in the higher realms. Now, some of us may wonder why we usually don't remember any of our previous lifetimes. This is purposely hidden from us because we should live in the here and now. And exact knowledge about our former incarnations would only burden us. Think about it. We may have done, maybe we may have hundreds of, of former lives and many we have done and done awful things. Now, this knowledge alone would overshadow our decisions in carrying out our daily tasks. Once we understand the dynamics of the law of reincarnation, everything falls into place. Suddenly, everything makes sense. Why are some poor, others are rich, some healthy, others sick, why there are wars, and so on. I have always been amazed by the incredible love and perfection that rules our magnificent universe. Naturally, this was only a very short overview. And I hope you are inspired to study more on this incredible subject. Did you know that reincarnation was a fundamental part of the original Christian teachings and that it was later banned by a Roman emperor? Come join me in part two of reincarnation and I will tell you more about it. You may also enjoy the videos on karma. And okay. All right, before the lines are now open for you to call in and before we go on, I just want to say that we are not saying that this is the only way to believe, not at all. 
uh, these teachings came, I was with Hans, I met Hans about in 1982 when we both uh, studied these teachings. We came together and we studied these teachings and been putting them into practice all our lives. And I want to say to you that it, we're not saying to you this is the only way, this is something you must believe or anything like that. What we're saying is that it's food for thought information. You can take what resonates in you and leave the rest. That's all. That's all this is. So anyway, you have some questions you want to ask? I do. I have questions. Um, after watching the video, there were a couple of things that... Uh, were interesting to me and things that I wanted to bring up about when they were talking about um, the family unit and how we're reincarnated, you know, into a group mm -hmm. over and over again. Right. Many, many times. Yeah, say that once more. I was... There was how something... we were, were reincarnated as a family unit. Yeah. We Usually we come back as a family unit mm -hmm. over, many times over and over. But I was wondering, is is a step parent or a, a someone outside that family unit? Are they also considered in that family unit somehow? No, not always. Um, they could be from another family unit, but we had some karma with them, and so we had something to work out with them, and so our lives met, just like we do with everyone else that we meet on this planet. Oh, so you had karma with them? Yeah, you had some karma to work out, and I mean, nothing is a coincidence in life. Uh, so there was some karma to work out that you had to do with this person. And it could have been a stepfather or a stepmother. It could have been an adopted child into a family that already had children. It could have been any of that. But you did know them in a past life, and you did have something you had to work out. Okay. All right. And also um, talking about the Bible or, you know, the Koran for some or... Um, what I'm learning, and I haven't read the Bible from cover to cover, but what I'm starting to realize is I think my thought is that the Bible is just basically a handbook for how to live, how to how to live on this planet, how to, like everybody always says, you know, life didn't come with directions. Well, right. yeah. you get your directions, some of them in the Bible, mm -hmm. you, you know, as far as being a good person, um, helping those who are less fortunate, you know, um, helping the lady across the street, picking up something, think the way you brought me up to, you know, pick up things if they're on the ground to, to open the door for somebody to just be generally a, a good person and be caring and, you know, not to do the wrong thing, not to hurt anybody, not to say terrible things or put things out there that you don't want to come back to you, which I try very hard to do, <laughs> especially when I'm driving. <laughs> um, it's not easy. So that's what I'm getting the gist of. I'm, you huh. know, planning on reading more of the Bible, and I've been talking to a lot of people lately about, you know, the all Bible. the different things in the Bible. Yeah. Um, you're right about the Bible. It's, um, it's a history book. I recently, I've been taking Bible, I've been in Bible study class for about a couple of years, and I wanted to learn myself more about the Bible itself. Uh, beside the teachings that I have, and uh, it has a lot of wonderful, wonderful information in it. Uh, it it is based on history at that of those times, the way people thought about those times, and uh, the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament is very, very different. But the main thing in the Bible is the Ten Commandments and the Sermon on the Mount, and the two commandments: uh, love God as only God himself, worship no other gods, and love your neighbor as yourself, and the golden rule of uh, do unto others that you would have others do unto you, and don't do unto others what you don't want them to do to you. Those are the most important things in the Bible. If everybody followed that, no matter what else you read and how much you enjoy it, those things are the most important things. If people acted that way towards each other, we would have a lot less problems in this world. Mm. So, I mean, I think everybody should read the Bible. I think it's, it's got wonderful information all about how Christ was when he walked on this planet, what happened to him, and everything in the New Testament. Uh, revelations are wonderful, and um, some of the stories in the Old Testament of faith and people 
you know, bravery and all that. It, it's good. It, so, you know, yeah, I think people should should read it. It's a good book. Or if you have of another religion, the Koran, or, or any of the other books um, that are out there, you should familiarize yourself with them all. And then you make your choices, you know? Mm. So. Um, I was curious, actually, how we originally chose to come here as far as, you know, separating from from God or... You know, I don't think of him as a, an old man who sits up there with a white beard and a staff, but, no. you know, as a great power that he is, why would we choose to leave him and, and come here anyway? I mean, there's got to be a long story about that. There is a long story about that, and I, I give lectures on that, and I really wouldn't have time to go into the whole thing, but basically uh, there were some problems, and we left, and we God gave us this planet to come down to, and because he loved us so much, and for a place to work out. This is like, we call this earth school, a place to come and learn and grow. Um, you can learn things on the other side of life too, but you, you are like attracts like. So you'll go to a place where people like yourself are, are there, like-minded people, and you don't learn anything because no one's there to rub you the wrong way. You know, we're down here on the planet. They'd rub me the wrong way if they were like me. <laughs> <laughs> if, like down here on the planet Earth, you meet all kinds of people, all kinds of people from all different walks of life with all kinds of thoughts and everything. And especially if you meet someone who seems to rub you the wrong way, that's something, that's called the law of correspondence. And it's telling you that whatever aggravates you, makes you angry in this other person, you have the same trait in you. Uh oh. Now, 99% of the people I tell this to don't want to hear this. They don't want, oh no, there's no way. I was one of those. They told me, when I first heard of it, I had uh, problems with my mother. We were like a cat and dog, okay? And when they told me that, the reason why I have so many problems, the reason why I had this anger towards her was because I had the same traits in me. I said, no way, forget it. No, uh uh, I don't believe this. No. <laughs> No way, right? And then I started looking, you know, as time went on, I started thinking more and more, and I started looking at each little trait, and then I look at myself, and I go, ooh, I do act like that sometimes. Or she'll say something, or I'll say something, and I go, ooh, that reminded me of my mother. And I realized that, yeah, it was true. I did have a lot of her traits. And as I realized them, and I stopped doing them, little by little, they fell away from me, and I didn't have that anger towards her. And when she passed on, in the hospital, just before she passed on, as a matter of fact, the night before, I made such peace with her in my heart, and I felt so peaceful knowing that I truly forgave her. And the next morning, I got a call that she passed on. But I was at total peace, and that's good. And that usually means that her and I don't have any more karma together. I will, will, don't have anything more to work out with her, that everything is okay, so... That's how it is. Surprised if she shows up and you're. Yeah, she may show up and and she may be my daughter to learn from me. You know. And by the way, folks, this is my daughter. Hopefully, in the next Tina. life, she'll be my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so to tell you, you know, how we got here, like I said, that's a a long story and another story. Uh, people talk about Adam and Eve, and in, in in Bible study, I learned that Adam and Eve was more or less a fable. And that that's not really, you know, it didn't happen on this planet and so forth like so on. So the problem is that every religion that uh, you read about, they all have a bit of the truth. They really do. There's a bit here and a bit here and a bit here and a bit here. For me, when I started my search, I couldn't find anything to pull it all together and have one path for me until I found my teachings and then it did. And any of these teachings you can find, if you don't agree with what I have here, you can... You can search out, especially now you have the internet. You can ask questions. You can find answers. You can get books, everything. Mm, for there are so much information out there. I, I was just speaking with a friend of mine last night who told me when he was 18 years old, he was an atheist, and he wanted to know what it all was, what it all meant, and he did so much research, and he's read tons and tons of books, and you know he's decided to come upon being what he is now by all of the information that he obtained, you know, mm -hmm. reading from reading. There's there's so much information out there. I, I don't know if I could even get into it all. But now you say um, um, 
you when you finish your karma with some someone they don't have to necessarily come back or you don't interact with them again are there other uh planes or or, or planets or or levels that you know if you have that higher consciousness that you don't come back to earth you go to another level right yeah you do there's different planes all the way going up till you get to heaven some people believe uh, if you pass away and you get less rights, you die and you wake up, you're an angel. Um, I can't believe that because what have you really learned? You know, uh, what have you really changed in yourself if you just all of a sudden, boof, become an angel? You know, what was the purpose of being here? Certainly not to get a house and a car and to go to school and to grow up and to get riches and to get all this and do all that and become famous. And then you all grow old and you all look bad and you all die the same way and you can't take any of it with you. So that's why I started my search in the first place. It didn't make sense to me. It wasn't enough. There had to be a deeper meaning. So yes, there's other planes when you work out what you have to do here and it's not needed, you go to a higher plane and so forth. And on each level, there's teachers to help you and show you the way. And on the other side, there's a, there's a kind of a, a way station, we would call in the middle, a place where you would go. And it's life between lives. And he has a video about that. And we're going to show that. And when you're there, you consult with your angels and your teachers. And they tell you what's best for you, whether to come back to Earth, whether to stay there for a while, whether to move on to a higher plane. There's a very good DVD uh, documentary. It's a movie, actually. It's written um, by a, a medium, and the spirit spoke through the medium to write this book. It's in Portuguese and it has English subtitles, but it's so good that you, I don't think you'll mind the subtitles. I watch it over and over, and I read it just like that. And it tells about the life between lives, how he was here, what, what was like on the, other, in, on the other side before he was going to decide where he was going to go. Very great movie. I would advise people to, to buy Who's that and take a look. It's called Astral City. Mm -hmm. All right. And if you forget that, you can always get in touch with me, and I'll tell you again. You can email me or whatever. Astral City. You can Is buy that it. the one that I watched? The yeah. Astral City? Yeah. Oh, the one that I was yeah. unsure of? Yeah. <laughs> you can buy it on um, Amazon or one of those places, anybody that is interested enough to do that. So, yeah. That the answer to my, your question is yes, there are other planes, other levels that you can go to. And in that movie, it showed it, too. So, Yeah, that movie was a little troubling where he ended up when he first passed, crossed over. In the purgatory place. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people know about purgatory. You don't ever want to end up there. <laughs> well, a purgatory is, is a place of your own making where people go who don't believe in anything actually they really don't know what to do with themselves after and they go to this place and they just hang out there and it's it's not a pleasant place um at any time if they want to leave they can ask their angels to help them to leave but but they don't believe in that they don't believe in angels they don't believe in anything a higher power so they never ask you know and it's um it's really pretty sad but this movie explains it there's another movie, uh, What Dreams May Come, with Robin Williams. Mm. And when he went to search for his wife, and he went through this, what they called a hell. Something out of Dante's Inferno. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 I personally don't believe in hell, um, mm. because I can't believe that any father, God, would condemn his children to an everlasting burning place mm. to burn and burn the rest of your life. Certainly, we couldn't do that to our children. Certainly, the man who created us or the spirit that created us couldn't do it to us. Well, I would think so, that reincarnation would be the way to work out those things, not going into a fiery pit of hell because well, we're that, all his children. Yeah, that fiery pit of hell is only in our minds. Mm. If you, you, what you believe you is what you'll see. What you believe is where you'll go. Okay. Well, in that case, I'm going to a sunny beach. <laughs> With lots of palm trees. I'll be able to go snorkeling and she's going to go to Summerland. Have lots of pink flamingos around me. Yeah, <laughs> Summerland. That will be my place. But really, you can on the other side. You can whatever you imagine, wherever you want to go, you can be there. Yeah, it's it, it's good once you get the knowledge that you need. It, it, it takes a while because will there be other people there? Oh yeah. Oh, yes. Oh yeah. Usually, if it's you not sounding too bad though. No, if you have beliefs. 
usually um, you believe in life after death and so forth. When you when you wake up, you, you'd probably be greeted by people who you loved who have passed on. In our case, it'd be my son, your brother. Mm. Okay, my relatives, my aunts mm. and uncles who were nice, you know. My dogs. Yeah, dogs. Animals mm. are in heaven, too, just along right, right alongside with us. And sometimes they'll incarnate, too, if they need to teach. Animals are only here to teach us. They're little angels that are here to teach us, and we treat them horrendously. But that's another, Some people do. Yeah, that's another story. Mm -hmm. Some people know how precious animals are, but that's another story. They and incarnate you, into human form? No, oh. they incarnate in, into other animals oh. that come down, you know. And sometimes they come visit us. I've seen animal spirits in the house. In somebody else's house. Didn't you have a dream about? Oh, Tell us about of, your, uh, your dogs. Both of my dogs came back, actually. It's, it's, it's such a burden to, to put a dog to sleep. And I've had many friends, you know, contact me, especially on Facebook and stuff like that. Everybody posts pictures of their, their dogs that have passed. And our dogs were with us for 13 years. You know, they're like your children, especially when you don't have children. And um, my Tashi, she got sick, and she ended up having a tumor that... She, you know, made her, her left leg gave out on her. And every time she stood up, she'd fall over. And she'd look up at me and, and I'd be like, hey, that's all right. I'll pick you up. I'm going to cry. I'll pick you up. It's no big deal. We'll get past this together, you know. And I'd pick her up and we'd walk her with the towel. And it got to a point where um, she just couldn't. She'd, she'd look up at me and she knew it was time to go. But the burden of, of taking a life away, it's a tough one. It's a really tough one. And I was having a real hard time with it for a long time after we put her to sleep. Um, I think about four months went by, and I would cry on the way to work. I'd cry on the way home, and I'd be like, "This is this is ridiculous. I can't I can't get past it." I know. And I started to pray, and I said, "Listen, God, I I have to see her again. I have to know that she's okay with me taking her life away. I have to know it. And here, I can't I can't get past it." And I'd say maybe a week or two later, I had a dream about her. I had a dream that uh, I was standing in a really green grassy field, and there was a gate, uh, a wooden gate, and I saw these feet jumping up and down on the other side of the gate. And then all of a sudden, the gate opened, and she came running towards me. And I couldn't believe it. I burst into tears, and she ran up to me, and I hugged her, and I grabbed her, and I was petting her, and I, I told her how much I loved her, and I said to her, do you forgive me? She started licking my face, you know. It was amazing. It was amazing. And she stayed with me for a while, and then, then I, you know, I, I guess eventually I woke up. I don't know, but I woke up feeling that, okay, I can move forward now. I can move forward because it is. It's a big burden to take a life away, you know. It's. I know. For me, it is anyway. Oh, I know. And then my Sam, same thing. Same thing. He passed away. He was really sick. He was sick most of his life. And we took we took care of him. We did a lot to take care of him and keep him going, especially my doctors at the Orange Vet. They were amazing. And um, Sammy, you know, when he same thing. He when he passed, we had to put him to sleep. And uh, a few months went by, and I went through the same thing all over again. And I said, you know what? You know what has to happen? I said, I can't, I can't get past it. And so I went to sleep, and I had a dream. That we were sitting on a my my husband and I were sitting on a picnic bench, and I was just sitting looking downward, and um, next thing I know, Tasha came walking up with her head down, like look, and I looked up at her, and the next thing I know, she turned her head, and here came Sam, she had brought him to see me, and he came running over, and I jumped up and I grabbed him, and then we were rolling on the ground together, and he was licking my face, and I told him how much I missed him. And how much I loved him, and his tail was wagging, and it was just—it was cathartic for me. I, <laughs> I needed that to get past it. Mm -hmm. I really did, and I think that you know anyone who's lost a pet that they are having a hard time with, needs to pray because many times they'll come back and visit you. They'll come back and let you know that they're okay, that they've passed over, you know, and they're where they need to be now, and they're not in pain anymore. They're running around, you know. I don't know if they'll come back. I think. Sometimes I think that uh, they're reincarnated into the dogs we have because they act so much like them. Our dogs now, they act a lot like them. It's, it's uncanny. But, yeah, I believe in that. Thank you for yeah. sharing that with us. I know that was really hard for yeah, you. I don't have any tough. Kleenex for you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what, what, what you said, a key word you said was believe. You have to believe 
in something more than just this earth. You have to believe and you have to think positive and you have to ask and pray. Can, I would love to see them again. I would love to know that they're okay. Mm. I know. I know. I've had that with my, my, my animals that passed on. They've come and visit me in various times. And, uh, and it's not just a dream. I mean, people no. say, well, it's a dream. It's not a dream. It's, it, it, it just feels too real. And, and you're not saying things you would say in a dream. I'm saying, hey, I've missed you. I'm talking to you like, I've missed you. I'm so I'm glad to see you. Not That's not just a dream. You, no. know? you know when it's a dream and you know when it's not. I mean, there's many people that I talk to and, you know, they tell me that they know when it's a dream and they know when it's not. It's called out of body experiences that's what it's called mm. you you're you're it's not a dream but but you do it in your dream because that's when the body relaxes enough for the spirit to come out and to travel to a place you travel to a mutual place where you can meet your animals and that's why it happened like that mm. and you do know you know i think <clears throat> people really do know the difference between a dream and an out-of-body experience when something seems so real to you it's not a body experience, and we all have it. Some people can do it if they, if they, when they, people who meditate a lot, who get really, really quiet, sometimes they can do it at that time. And a lot of times it'll happen just before you fall asleep or just before you wake up in the morning. It'll happen like that. And it's a real gift, especially for you wanting to feel that you did the right thing and wanting to know they still loved you. And yeah. I know. I know. It's a hard decision to make. It's a very hard one. Anyone who loves animals can attest to that. Mm -hmm. It's a very hard decision to make. Letting go is difficult, you know. It's different when a loved one passes on, but they just they pass on. You don't make any decisions usually, you know, unless yeah. you have to make a decision about life support. But you know, bringing bringing your you know bring your grandmother in and say you know hey, <laughs> time for her to go. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> she can't get around anymore, you know. Sorry, Graham, but it's not like that, you no, know. No. That's terrible. <laughs> Let me give you this phone number again, folks. It's 203-907-0436. I hope you'll call us. And if you don't, maybe another show you will. Mm. Was there anything else more you'd want to talk about? In relation to reincarnation, yeah, or we mm. can we can talk about other things too because um, I think Hans explained it very well. Um, for me, to add, there's not really too much more I can add to it. Uh, when we do the second part, he'll have some more ideas that we can talk about, and um, it's hard for me to think of a question because I know the answers. So I, you know, I as as I believe them. What, you know, it resonates in me, and as I believe the truth. Um, but um, we can talk about other things, being as we have not had any phone calls to take up our time. So um, we still have about um, mm, 20 minutes left to talk on the show. So. Call. Huh? Please. Yeah, call. Somebody <laughs> please call. <laughs> We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, we would. We have the phone right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, our conversation about free will the other day was quite an interesting one. Yeah. I've I been had a hard time with that for many, I know. many years. I've been trying to tell her what free will is, and, and, and she'd say, nah, I don't think you should have free will. I think God should just step right in and just just take it away from just say, do this, you do that, let's get rid of this person, let's do that, let's do this. <laughs> I said, how can you do that? And then I, I gave you an example. Remember, my son, who has passed on, my love, he moved away from Connecticut. He moved uh, to Florida, and then he moved to Georgia. And I wanted him to come back to Connecticut. We both wanted him to, to come back mm -hmm. and live here again. And um, somehow he just liked life down there better. So he also was like, he was even worse than you about that. He didn't like free will. He said, mm. God should make them do this. It should make them do that, make them do this. I said, really? Mm. I said, okay. I said, God wants us to, to, to do the things because we choose to do the things. He wants us to love him because we choose to love him. I said, I'll give you an example. Okay, I want you to come back and live in Connecticut, all right? So I can do two things. 
I can take away your free will in two ways. Number one, I could have a lobotomy done on you and bring you back. And you would, I would say, do this, honey. You'd say, yes, mommy, no, mama, yes, mama, no, mama. You wouldn't know what you were doing, but you'd be there. The second thing I could do is I could build a, a cage in the basement. I could put you in the cage and I could bring you your meals and talk to you. You'll hate me. You'll probably yell and scream at me, but you're there and I have you. I said, but all this is against your will. You're not there back because you love me, because you want to come back, because you chose it. You're back because I took away your free will. And then he says, then he realized, you know, God gave us choice. It's all about choice. What do we choose to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think what hurts the most is the people that choose to do the terrible things. I know. I know. know, The terrible things in them. Unfortunately, Facebook seems to bring about uh, much more stories than you would normally hear. I mean, you hear more stories all over the place. You know, everybody's on Facebook these days, pretty much. And uh, I've seen and heard stories from all over the world of, of, you know, people hurting each other and hurting animals and all the terrible things they do. And I think that he couldn't handle that. You know, it was just too much yeah, of it. Yeah, it was. He was and that's why he wanted sympathetic. it taken away. Facebook has its bad points, but it has its really good points, too, because um, I think you hear more news on there and are spared all the junky stuff. But here, what's important to people, what they post on there, and people say their opinions and they have discussions. Sometimes you could have very nice discussions, and sometimes someone will come on who thinks one way only and tells everybody that they're all wrong and gets angry and everything Mm. else. That's not right, because... You should, they say you should never argue about religion or politics. I think that they both make the most interesting discussions if you don't try to force someone to believe what you believe, Mm. okay, about politics or about religion. You just say, this is my opinion. What do you think? And you give your opinion. And you have food for thought conversation, okay? Mm. You don't, I had an uncle once who you couldn't talk to him about anything because everything he said, he said, you're all wrong and I'm right. (laughs) So you couldn't talk with them. And that's how people used to be. But I think nowadays people are understanding more. Mm. I know when someone tells me something, if I say something, I say, you know, I don't feel that way. I feel this way. And I said, well, I'm glad you told me that. I didn't look at it like that. Okay. If you have that kind of a mind. So it makes interesting conversation. And Facebook, I've learned a lot of things about how people think, how people act, what they're feeling, uh, how we share a lot of the same thoughts people do you know yeah I've actually met people and friended people who've made comments on certain yeah commentaries on news things and and uh, you know then you start to find out you have the same um, attraction like he was saying on the on he was saying on the picture where you're attracted to certain people because of like-mindedness mm-hmm. we're like mind right. like-minded people yeah right yeah I've made a lot of new friends on Facebook it was my birthday the other day. I had so many happy birthdays. I went, wow, do I have that many friends on Facebook? <laughs> I, was, I was so thrilled and so honored, you know. And uh, it's, it's interesting. You know, they, they, we put pictures of beautiful spiritual sayings, you know, things to help the animals, petitions to sign to help animals, uh, petitions to sign to help people. Uh, and know what's going on. So the ice, the ice bucket challenge. Oh, that did a lot of uh, a lot of people, but it, but it joined a lot of people together. It did, but I, I it joined I, a lot of people together. A lot of people got together for the cause. Um, one of our, our my, one of our coworkers. Uh, I, I'm a paramedic, and one of our coworkers um, was diagnosed suddenly with the ALS, and uh, um, they raised a lot of money for. Her. And one of the big reasons was was from the ice bucket challenge and a lot of people you know raised money and supported her and and it's I thought it was amazing it traveled further and farther on Facebook than I think it ever would have by word of mouth oh yeah or anything else is what I'm saying about it yeah the only thing I say about the negative thing about it's goofy and it 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 hurts people and somebody got hurt and a child got hurt well tempers uh, and things like that but it's goofy and people like to be goofy yeah and they they love goofy and they like to see other people people get goofed on you know, so you have to appeal to people to what they like, you know. Mm. It's too bad that we have to do that to raise awareness. But yeah. if it works, hey, I'm not going to say anything. Let it, let it, let them do it, you know. Mm. So, um, 
But anyway, that's a good place to to have discussions and meeting people and and see what's going. I'm sure everyone has their own uh, family. I call it Facebook family in addition to a blood family, but Facebook family on on there, and it's really really nice. So, so getting back to um, reincarnation, I started thinking what. In our next lifetime, will it be you and me and my brother and maybe my father back again in the same? It could be if we have things to work out with each other. You know, maybe the next lifetime, I, I, you will be my mother. and Or my son could be my husband. Whatever. How I know it just sounds weird, but you don't look at it like that because you're, it's just a whole, whole new life and everything. Um it depends on what we have to work out. If if some of us get a lot of work done and they can move on to the higher planet, then they won't be coming back. Then who is left will be coming back to work things out with each other. Oh. Okay. When you're allowed to go higher, it depends on what you've learned and worked out. And if you're, you're it's, a, it's all vibration. If your vibration matches another plane, then you can go there. You can't go there if your vibration doesn't match. Just like you can't go to heaven when you have all these things like, you know, die, poof, become an angel, go right to heaven. When you have all these things that you haven't worked out with anybody, you die with hatred on your mind, with anger on your mind, with, with grudges on your mind. You go to a place that's so pure and loving, you can't stay there. It'd be like falling through clouds. You just fall. You can't go there. So it depends on the vibration that you've created for yourself in this lifetime, where you go. You know, how much you love, how much you do the things you, you talked about before. Mm. caring and helping someone and doing unto others. We're all, I read something on Facebook. Oh, we're all just walking each other home. And mm. that's true. We're all walking each other home, all trying to help each other, all showing by our examples. Sometimes we don't even know that we are showing other people what to do. And somebody will see something and, and somebody that somebody did something and, and, and they'll be happy. Like, like that thing they had a long time ago, pay it forward. Mm. And they had a video on, on Facebook about that, too. Yeah. Do something for someone. Not necessarily they're going to do it back to you, but they'll do it for someone else, and they'll do it for someone else, and, and you create a beautiful chain, and you didn't even realize mm. that you did that. You know? Yeah. And there's a lot of heartwarming things, like um, I saw a man put a sign and said, I give free hugs. Won't you yeah. hug me? And he stood there with a blindfold on. So many people hugged him. I mean, I was crying. It was really? just so beautiful. It was so beautiful. Because people, people really do want that. They want love, and they want to be hugged, and they want to be accepted. And, and then there was a beautiful one. Um, what was it? Was it um, in a camera or, or a place where you take your picture? I don't know. P something on the screen, and they did you see that one? And they said, you're a beautiful person. Um, you did all these great things, and, and I want you to know how much I love you with some relative. And the people are standing there crying and crying, and I'm crying. I'm saying, my God, that's what people really want. They mm. just want to know that they're loved and cared about. But in order to be loved and cared about, you have to give that love and care back to someone, and it comes back. And whatever you give out comes back. Bad stuff and good stuff. But it all that saying, what goes around comes around, that's what that means. What you give out, you come... That saying an eye for an eye and a tooth doesn't mean that somebody punches you in the head, you're supposed to punch them back. No, it means what you give out, you get back. May not be a punch in the head from somebody. Maybe something falls on your head or something else happens, but you do good things, you get good things back. I mean, it's just the way it is. It's a law of attraction. Well, that's why when people do bad things near me, I duck. <laughs> so I don't want that karma coming and hitting me on the way back around. <laughs> Yeah, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Lord. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> get me out of this room. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> so you don't know, even friends that you meet in your lifetime, there's not going to, I don't believe, I'll put it that way, just put it on me, that anything is a coincidence in life. I believe that everything happens for a reason. And the reason is for our spiritual growth, always. Even animals come to our life to give us messages. And there are people who know how to read these messages from animals. There are people who know what it means when you see, um, like one time I was in traffic in the car, and this butterfly came and flew around my windshield in the traffic. 
And I'm lo looking at it, and I had my window by. I said, what are, you, what are you doing in this traffic? You're going to get killed. Go away. Go away. You know, but he came to, to give me a message, to tell me something. Okay? And I, and I read up on the butterfly. <laughs> Turn your headlights on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. You can't help yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but I read up on what, what it means when, a, when a, an animal comes into your life um, in a place where you wouldn't expect it or repeatedly, repeatedly, that same kind of animal, maybe a different animal, but the same breed, what they mean. There's books out that tell you about mm. that. So there's all kind of messages that we get. So that's why I said life is not a coincidence. Everything happens for a reason. I just recently read that book, um, Proof of Heaven, by a neurosurgeon, oh, yeah. Eben Alexander. Yeah, tell and, us about um, that. It's a very good book. It was very interesting. You know, he was he was into a coma from an illness when he was talking about a lot of the things that he heard. But one of the things that resounded with me was that um, he was saying that when he was pulled into this atmosphere, it was dark at first, but he heard... You know, he heard different things like different sounds, singing and voices that he couldn't make out. But he felt like there were people around, even though he couldn't see anyone. But he said the thing that I liked the most hearing was that he said that he felt and he was a, an orphan, actually, um, as a child. And he was and a he scientist. Was adopted. It didn't have any beliefs, right? He didn't believe. Yeah, he actually was a neurosurgeon who didn't he, he didn't believe in, in God in all or anything that. Like he that, believed right. in science. Right. He didn't Science believe are in the hardest him. people to He'd had many people say convince. to him that they'd had experiences. He'd had people say to him that they watched him operate on them from, you know, their body floated up to the roof and watched them, you know, and he never believed and he blew it off. But um, he's the one thing that he said was that he, f he felt complete and utter love when he was in this place where he got pulled into, where his spirit got pulled into and his consciousness, and he didn't want to go back. He wanted to stay there because never in his life here on earth did he ever feel that way. Mm -hmm. And then he realized that that was the one thing that he was lacking throughout his whole life was that he never felt, because his parents gave him up, he never felt 100% loved and, and taken care of, and he felt that there. And because he felt that there, he didn't want to come back. But then they told him, you know, it wasn't his time that he had to go back. But uh, it changed his life. Though, it changed didn't it? his life, and he started. He said to he, you know, he wanted to share that with people, you know. And, and there'll be people who will believe it, and people who won't, right. you know. Like you say, you, you take what feels right to you, what feels good in your heart, and you leave the rest behind. If it doesn't feel good to you, or you, eh, you know, well, then you, you go with what believe what you believe in, and right. what feels good to you. And and recently, I've I read too uh, on there where the that movie. Um, was it a place in heaven? Um, um, the little boy who was supposed to supposed to have died and gone to heaven and came back. Um, uh, what was the name of that? Place? Um, there is a God or something. There is like a heaven. That. There yeah. is a heaven. I think it's called. And now they're saying that the little boy never. He said the little boy said that he never did was sick. He never had that uh, feeling. He never from, went to it was heaven. From that movie, I yeah. thought it was something else. No. So when he passed over and then came back and he told everybody about it in the town and all that. His father was a preacher. Um, there is a heaven. I think it's the name of it. There is a heaven. Yeah. Heaven is for real. Is for That's real. it. Heaven is for real. Thank you, crew. I didn't think it was pertaining to that movie. Yeah. It was pertaining to that movie. Oh. And I thought to myself, what could be the reason why he would come, he would do that and then take it back? And the only thing I could think of was, I think that was the work of the lower powers, people saying, see, see what I told you? That wasn't true. All these things and try to discredit. That will help to discredit other things that go on. And that's when you out there have to say, what resonates in me? What is the truth? What is it? What's real for me? What do I really believe? Never mind all these things. What do I feel in my heart? That's what you have to say out there. What choices do I want to make? Well, what entity would want to keep us from going back? What, what would want to keep us well, from... Well, there are lower powers, you know, who have a playground here on this planet and try to influence people. You ever see the... The devil on one side and the angel on the other side, you know, so to speak. Um, you know, I don't believe in a devil, but I believe in a, in a lower entity who, who wants to do things that's a different way. But 
He's our brother and our brother, and everybody in this whole universe is our brothers and sisters because we're all created by God. Even the person that you think is the most horrible and that you hate and that you say could never be is your brother or your sister, and they're all going home. I don't care how bad they are. They're all going home one day. They may have to go through a lot more than you, and they may have to suffer a lot more, but they are going to go home because mm. you don't throw away your children. Yeah, that's another thing I I have a real hard time with is um, limbo. I think that if God loves us, he loves all of us as mm -hmm. children. I mean, we're his children. Just because you don't uh, you don't get baptized, you go into a place where you can never get out of. That no, I had no, a very no. hard time with that. Yeah, I, I had heard that I think when I was younger that um, uh, there was a place like that. Uh, I, was, I was raised Catholic that... Um, you stayed there all the time or, or until the end of the world or something like that? I don't know. I don't, I don't think they hold that true anymore. I don't even think the uh, Catholic Church holds that true anymore. Mm. I think they just feel you go someplace, you work it out, and go on. I don't know. I'd have to ask someone. It makes me wonder, there. too, why they, they first talked about reincarnation and then all of a sudden they started to ban it. They banned the whole oh, idea right. of reincarnation. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm glad you brought that up because... Um, I wanted to tell our audience out there that um, it's, if you look it up in the history books, reincarnation was a belief up until the year around 300. And then one of the higher ups there, I can't remember the name right now. I, I'll, I'll try to get it for you for the next show. And um, he banned reincarnation, the belief in it. He, ban he banned the belief in reincarnation uh, because it was, when people believe that, it, they didn't stay close to the various the religions that were going on then, the Roman Empire, uh, who was trying to make everyone believe one way. So they outlawed reincarnation. And you can look that up. You can Google it. The ban put up, uh, when was reincarnation banned? And, and it'll tell you all about it. So that's what happened because it was. It was and at that particular time, they also, um, Elijah was Moses. If I'm not mistaken, and he was reincarnated, and they didn't want to believe that because if they did that, they they we wouldn't believe in Jesus as a Messiah and so forth and so on. And there's not, you know, we're, we're not telling anybody to believe in anybody or anything, but you can look this all up on the web or in books. If you go to the library, you can find all this information too, plus all things that we're going to tell you. We have many, many DVDs to discuss in the future. And I hope that someone will call and ask questions or email me uh, or write letters and we'll answer them on the show. I'll be interested to see what the second part of uh, reincarnation. the reincarnation yeah. video is from Hans. And then I think we'll do the one of, of life between lives before you incarnate. What happens to, to suggest where if you're going to reincarnate or where you're going to go or what you're going to do. We'll get those three all out and then uh, we'll, we'll move on from there for the different ones. And everybody can go on um, the web and Google www.lifeexplained.com, which I'd given you before, and you can look at all these videos. You can watch this one again. You could look at other ones, and you can ask questions about anything when you call us because we're going to do every single one here. All right? And we're still going to have guests. So in between these shows, we're going to have guest shows also, and you can also call in and talk to our guests or us, whatever you like. So... We're down to about a minute or so. So I guess uh, we'll give our contact information right now. To learn more information about this show or any of our past shows, please contact us at healoutsidethebox at yahoo.com or to reach me, Rosemary Lachance, phone 203-627-7966 or go on my website where there's tons of information for you, www.rosemarylachance.com. And we're also on Facebook under Healing Outside the Box. Where you can see pictures of our past guests, and you can learn about who might be coming in the future, and any little blurbs that we talk about on the show will be there. Okay, thank you. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you'll call in next time. Okay? Good night. Good night. Thank you. The river. Wash the journey from your hands 
feel the comfort flow.